Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 31st, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. So for this segment, I am just going to briefly talk about a radio show that I attended with host Caroline Casey last night at Stand Up Coyote, which was broadcast um, through a number of uh, West Coast radio stations, including KPFA. And I'm, I'm going to cover some of the, the topics that we covered, but I'd just like you to know that if you do listen, it, it's, it's, a, a, it's a bit off the, the beaten path of the usual fact-based reporting and, and analysis and an advocacy for climate action that I typically provide for you guys here and touches a lot more on aspects of politics and pop culture and, and, and various anecdotes than, than we usually go into. But we also did discuss a number of, of very, very serious, very Im important climate change related issues, in particular, the necessity at this point for, for everyone who's concerned about climate change to have the courage to act in, in every way that they know how as an individual, but in particular to learn how to cooperate and act well with others who are also interested in promoting climate action so as to form a global political movement that enables mass action for, for greater and, 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 and snowballing mass effect on the issue of climate change. Because uh, the, the, the big problem with responding to climate change thus far ha has been blocks put in place by politicians aligned with harmful fossil fuel-based interests that have delayed, denied, and, and downgraded climate action through policy, which produces large, large impacts. And, and just one example of, of how the policy is, has gotten to be really backwards is that fossil fuels, for example, are subsidized to the tune of around five trillion dollars. So, or I'm, I'm sorry, so $5 trillion over the course of, de of, a, of a decade, or $500 billion a year, which is basically putting our money in exactly the wrong place and, and, f and helping to, to forge a, a future that, that is basically untenable for, for human civilization. Now, there are a number of positive policies that have also been implemented, but that's just one example of, of things that are getting in the way of, of climate action, creating the kind of mass effect and, and more rapid transition to clean energy and, and more rapid curtailment of fossil fuel burning. So we, we talk about those kinds of issues as well, and in particular about how a, a I guess, I, I, this may sound like a bit of a trite term, but how, how mental state, how, how how pluck and, and indefatigability, if that is actually a word, is very important because, because there, there are a lot of people firing their, their messaging guns at us and, and trying to demoralize us, to, to make us feel bad about doing the right thing. And in all honesty, we should, we should hold on to that with, with clenched fists because, because we are, are not only a, a positive force for climate communication, but we are a driving force for, for, for what represents the hope of getting out of this crisis soon enough. So I'm just going to talk a, a little bit about some of the topics related to human-caused climate change that we covered. We did talk uh, about the algae crisis in Florida, which has a climate change fingerprint due to the fact that the oceans around Florida are warming and due to the fact that increased heavy rainfall events flush more nutrients into streams, rivers, estuaries, 
and the ocean, for providing more food for algae blooms. So, so that combination is, is, is a one-two impact that, that really tends to worsen harmful microbial bloom crises. And in the worst case scenario, where, where you get a, a very a warm, a very hot climate, in, in past climates, there's a lot of paleoclimate evidence that the oceans became in, in, invaded to to large extent with with massive toxic regions full of full of the the kinds of algae blooms that we are seeing in South Florida, but but on a much much larger scale. So so what's happening in South Florida has a climate change fingerprint, but it also has is related to just bad environmental policy that was. Uh, subjected on Florida by Rick Scott, and I, I think this graphic posted by Gal Guy Walton basically says it all. If a picture paints a thousand words, this one certainly does. We also talked a lot about the, or well, a bit about the the, the heat waves and, and drought that are impacting Australia. Caroline has a lot of apparent audience members from Australia, and this is a big deal, and I, I just Notice this report from the Strait Times today, just carrying that forward today, that the, the present drought and, and heat wave in Australia is the worst, the, the drought is the worst since 1902. So now a century scale drought in Australia. And there's a, there's a climate change fingerprint for this as well, which, which we also talk about in the program. And last of all, we, we talked a bit about sea ice and, and, and sea ice related impacts in the Arctic and, and how sea ice is, a, is yet one more signal of, of, a, uh, of a deepening climate crisis precipitated primarily by fossil fuel burning. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the link. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about today, but I, I thought I would just give a shout out to... Caroline's program and and let you guys know that okay I'm not always super crazy serious well for the most part but but uh, with with Caroline we, we let our hair down a bit so thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon